This is Geometry, Chapter 10, Section 1, in which we will be studying circles and circumference. First off, we need to know what a circle is. It's nothing more than all the points in the plane, in the same plane here, that are equidistant from a given point, and that given point we call the center. Now, you've known this for a long time. Everything is the same distance away from the center point. And the way in geometry that we name a circle is we name it by the center of the circle. So this beauty right here would be called circle C. And the symbol for it is a circle with a dot in the middle. And then the name of the center, so in this case circle C. We put the dot in there to make sure you don't think you have an O or a zero. And you don't want to get confused with your symbols there. So make sure you put a little dot in the middle of your circle symbol whenever you have to use it. <clears throat> now circles have a few special segments involved. Okay. A radius of a circle is a segment that has one endpoint at the center and another endpoint on the circle. So it's something that goes from the center point to the edge. In this picture, we have a few different segments that qualify. Segment CF goes from the center to the edge, CE, and CD. And for future reference, you'll hear this term used quite a bit, the plural of radius is radii. Okay, that's how you pronounce that, radii. So CF, CE, and CD are all radii of that circle. Now, a segment that has both endpoints on the circle is called a chord. So something like AB would be a chord. Also, DE would be a chord because D and E are both on the circle. Now, DE also meets another description. DE is also called a diameter of the circle because it has both endpoints on the circle and it goes through the center. Okay. DE is a diameter. It goes through the center from one side to the other. AB is not a diameter. CF is not a diameter. When we have a circle, all the radii of that circle are congruent to each other. And I'm going to jump back to the previous picture here. CF is congruent to CD, which is congruent to CE. Any radius I draw in this circle, if I drew another line from C out to here, would be the same length as all those other ones. Okay. And it's also true that the diameters of a circle are equal. Okay. Again, DE would be the same as if I drew F through C to somewhere up here. That length would be the same as this length. The nice thing about circles are the same in every direction. And hopefully it's obvious from looking at the previous picture that the diameter is twice the length of the radius. Or another way to say that is the radius is half of the diameter. If it goes all the way across to make a diameter and it's only coming from the center out to make a radius, then the radius would have to be half of the diameter, or the diameter is twice the radius. Now all that holds true if we're talking about the same circle. All the radii are congruent, all the diameters are congruent, if we're in the same circle. If we have two different circles that have the same length for their radius, then we call those congruent circles. Okay. These two circles are congruent to each other. This one is exactly the same as this one.
coplanar circles, circles in the same plane that also have the same center, are called concentric circles. For those of you in Spanish, con means with. Centric center, they're with the same center. So the word tells you what it means. Concentric circles look kind of like a bullseye. Okay, so you fans of uh, Target, there you go. The Target logo is a bunch of concentric circles. Now it's possible for circles to intersect in two points, such as here, or here. Those are intersecting in two points. They could just intersect in one point if one circle is just touching the other one. It can be inside, or it can be outside, okay? Or it's possible that circles don't even intersect. They don't touch each other at all. And again, it could be an outside non-intersection or an inside non-intersection. Same thing with these concentric circles. They don't intersect at all, but one is inside the other is inside the other, okay? They're going to throw something at you in a couple of places where they say not intersecting circles, so I want you to have an idea of what that looks like. Now let's do a couple of problems here. If they tell me that the diameter of circle P is 30 inches, so the diameter of the bigger circle is 30, and the diameter of circle Q is 20, and the segment from B to P here is 9. They want us to find A, B, and Q, A. Right. I've found over time, when I'm looking at a problem like this, the circle parts of it tend to confuse people more than anything else. So I'm going to take just the part I need and make it into a problem a separate picture over here into a problem that I know how to work with. Okay. Now they told me that the diameter of circle P is 30. That means the radius of it from P to A is 15. They told me the diameter of circle Q is 20, so that means the radius is 10. And they told me that BP is 9. Okay. Now this problem is just like one we did back in chapter 1. If AP is 15 and BP is 9, how much is left for AB? Good old segment addition property. Where did 4 come from? That should not be a 4. That should be a 6. What 4? I didn't see a 4. Ah, that's what I did put the numbers in the wrong place. I don't know what you're talking about. Those numbers were there that way the whole time. Okay. 15 minus 9 leaves 6, and then 10 minus 6 leaves 4 over here. Okay. Well, that's not too tough, especially if you can get the arithmetic right. If you can, you're ahead of me. Now we also said we're going to talk about circumference. Circumference for a circle is the distance around the circle. You can think of it like a perimeter. Okay. There are two different ways to find the circumference. There's the formula pi d, circumference equals pi times diameter, or 2 pi r, 2 times pi times the radius. And in case you've forgotten... Pi is about 3.14. It's not exactly that, but that's a rounded off value that we can work with. Okay. When you're working these kinds of problems, folks, you can have a little bit of wiggle room in your answer. If you just punch into your calculator 3.14 times whatever, you'll get a little bit different answer than if you use the pi button. I don't care which way you do. If you want to use the pi button, you can do that. If you want to use 3.14, you can do that. If you want to mix and match and do one way sometimes and the other way sometimes, that's fine too. Whatever. So which formula should we use? 
Well, it really kind of depends on the information I have. They told me the radius in the first problem, so I'm going to use the 2 pi r version of the formula because it involves radius. 2 times pi times 2.5. Punch that through my calculator, and I believe I used the pi button when I did that, and got 15.708. Okay. If they tell me that the diameter is 16, I'm not going to use the radius version. I'm going to use pi d. So pi times 16, and again, I think I probably used the pi button on mine. If you use 3.14, your mileage may vary a little bit. Now, one more idea we need to throw in here, we'll be using it as we go along the chapter, is the idea of inscribed and circumscribed. Okay. A polygon is inscribed in a circle if all of the corners, all the vertices, lie on the circle. So this polygon PQRST right here, is inscribed in circle B. All of the points, all the corners, are sitting on the circle. And we don't have one out here somewhere. We don't have one in here somewhere. Everywhere that there's a, a corner, a vertex, it's touching the circle. Now a polygon is inscribed in the circle that way. The circle is circumscribed about the polygon if the circle touches all of the corners. Okay. Circum means around. Magellan circumnavigated the globe. He went around the world. Okay. So we're talking about going around the shape. So circle B in this case is circumscribed around about polygon PQRST. And folks, do try to be careful with that word. Okay, you make up your own joke here, but yeah, try to be careful. So we've dealt with circles, special segments. We've talked about different kinds of circles, concentric, congruent circles, whether they intersect or not, circumference, and then uh, inscribed and circumscribed. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down, bring them in with you, and we will see you in class.